On today's anvil, we're going to do more acroglass work. We're going to watch acroglass set. As fun as it is, Mark, I need your help. Okay. We have this uh, turn of the century doohickey. And unfortunately, it looks like somebody's been inside this gun and replaced a part or two when they really shouldn't have because mathematically it don't check and it's trying to eat itself alive. Is so that you, a Pedersen device? Do you think you can give me a hand getting this thing apart and getting some new pieces in there? Oh, absolutely. Right, guys i'm going to be straight up with you ordinarily you follow me down the rabbit hole in a voyage of discovery and i'm going to tell you there's been a a, a a team of individuals floating around inside this room that have helped me make heads or tails out of this thing um uh, othias and i have been beating our heads senseless on a sucker for about two days to come up with a few answers here but here's the long and the short of it this formation of parts as you have seen or you will see in the near future, is a Pedersen device, okay? There's a reciprocating mass here that floats back and forth, and there are two springs. There is a spring that returns this reciprocating mass forward, and then there is a spring that pushes the firing pin forward. These are coaxial springs here and here. These go inside each other. And I know you really can't see this in huge detail. Trust me, Bruno was animating this thing. Because if you think we're letting having a, a Pedersen device in this shop go floating by lazily, you are wrong. Here's the problem. A long time ago, someone tried to get around the fact that this extractor, this original equipment extractor, has a blunt nose on it and is battering the rear end of the brass. Ordinarily, on a non-historically significant weapon, I would have taken a stone to this and we'd have been done in about 10 swipes of a stone. However, modification of this extractor is not an option because we want future generations to know what it looked like um, the way it was delivered. I may, in the future, have to make an extractor for this, but for right now, the way these guys tried to get out of this thing was they made a collar for the front of this. And we're going to go to the whiteboard, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But this collar has had the absolute terwillikers beat out of it by a step right here. This whole part of the hole is four thousandths of an inch larger in diameter, or smaller, I mean, than this hole. So this piece goes up inside there, and it stops. Okay? The problem we're having was, if you do the math on all this, when this spring is fully compressed... It will go coil to coil two block about three one hundredths of an inch before this device runs into the back of its spring guide, meaning 10 to 20,000 pounds of force were put on that collar and it mauled the thing. So thanks to uh, Mr. McKenzie at the Springfield Armory National Historical Site, he disassembled a pristine Peterson device. And instead of me having to reverse engineer this thing, he showed us that a part that was probably made 50 to 60 years ago was made wrong. And that this replacement spring is about two coils too long. It's all washed out and you can't see it, but trust me, there is an entire board full of math done by Othias here. And we did all the math and came to the conclusion that I needed to make another part and that we needed to shorten down this spring. All right, we got a helical spring. We know that the spring that came with, came with the device, this spring that came with the device, those are 0.044 coils. So we know that if we collapse this thing all the way down until it's touching itself, we knew we had about 1.8 something, 1.84, I'm looking at his numbers, 1.840 worth of total coil length. Here's the problem. We had to condense all that down into 1.800 inches. Okay, that's a problem. That means that that spring was 40 thousandths of an inch too long. So let me show you what the consequences of that were. Okay, there is a, a smaller diameter tube 
and then it's bored out and it's larger. Okay, this is 0 0.302 inches. No, I'm sorry. Please don't hold me out against me. That's 300, and this here to here is 0 0.304. I kid you not, there is a two thousandths lip going all the way around. And into that, we have to make a collar that will not only engage that lip, but guides the spring. Okay, so here we go. Our springs are wrapped around the outside of that and yet still allows the firing pin and the firing pin spring to come down the center of that. And I'm going to tell you what, there is an RC8 separating this thing from working and not working. So here's what happened. The piece that they gave us, see these two coils I'm erasing right here? The piece that they gave us or that came with the gun that was destroyed looked like this. So that ate up two coils. Plus, we had to get rid of about one more if you did all the math. And right in here got destroyed. It got battered. It tried to take this piece of metal right here and strain it through that 300s hole like it was a reloading die or some sort of forming press. So what, I, what we've determined was we're going to make another piece and make the skirt shorter. That's only going to be 50 thousandths of an inch. Now, some of these numbers are not exactly what Mr. McKenzie telegraphed to us, but this gun is slightly different, and I'm maximizing every dimension I can to try to give me enough area over here that this thing doesn't exceed its pounds per square inch limit and go ahead and squish like just so much Play-Doh. What we did get off of him is that the max OAL on this thing has to be under... 300 thousandths of an inch. It's got to be under 300 thou long or it's not going to fit. In case you're wondering, guys, this is every 1950s 22 in existence. But which came first, the 1950s or Mr. Pedersen? I don't know. But let's go over to the lathe and have a good time, shall we? We're at the lathe here. We're going to turn the definitive version of this collar. We know that the inside bore of the bolt is 0 0.304, so we're going to go to 302 on the OD of this. Mic off, we're at 3560. So that's uh, 54 more we gotta go. Come down 54, half of that's 27. So we'll set to uh, 10, 27. That's how far we gotta go. So when that dial comes back around to zero, we're there. Fifty-five. Got to come in a little bit further. So let's verify here. We're at thirty-two seventy, and we want to be at three zero two. So uh, that's going to give us twenty more, which is ten, which is exactly what we got left on the dial. When you're moving in and out, you're moving a radius number, and we're doing diameter calculations. So you got to divide everything by two in order to get the right number. Again, 3175 going to 302, which is 3115. It's about right. Come in here. Right. 
3040 going to 3020. So we want to come off, uh, let's see, 2000, which is one more, and that touches us down right at zero. So I was right on the money the first time. So this last shaving cut is going to put us right on a nut. Come on, nice and slow. This last shaving cut is going to put us right on a nut. All right, I'm going to check it one more time. Bam, right on the money. Right on the money. We are exactly where we want to be. So now what we're going to do is face this off. And just face this out. Okay. Shut down and remount a center drill. And then center pop this to be bored out to the final diameter of about 177 or so. Where I want to go. So this will come out. We'll go to about 177. Right there. Now we'll go to 177, and I think I left that drill laying over here. That looks a lot like it. 16580. 177. That's us right there. That's the center hole. This is the hole that allows the firing pin spring or the firing pin plunger. I don't know the exact nomenclature. Um, but you will after Otheus gets done with his episode. Trust me. Remember, this hole isn't critical. All right, the skirt is uh, essence of skirt, right? We're just cutting essence of skirt because we're using the, the 43 thou spring. So this is the skirt's just going to be essence of skirt. When you say skirt, you mean the actual head? Of the, the part skirt? that's going up inside the. Uh, yeah, it's going to be. I have to mention. Not much. Uh, 0 0.05 is what we're going for. All right, 05. Got it. Got it. I got it. Do here is I want to just sharpie mark this down because I want to get the length. All right, we're going to get the length here. We want to max away all the 300. So 300 right to there. Okay. So. So that line right there is a max OAL. And then the rest of the way, we're just going to basically take everything off of this that isn't the hole. So that's the max. We want to be right there. We want to take off everything that isn't the hole. Bruno, can I have the, uh, the, the uh, return spring, the one we're going to use, the fat one? Thank you. This has to go up inside that, so that spring's got to ride up inside, so I got a long way to go. There isn't going to be a whole hell of a lot of wall on this when I'm done. This spring is, the big spring was apparently used, I'm sure we'll cover this somewhere else. The big spring was someone's attempt to get around an ammunition chambering problem. So they went to a spring with a lot more rate. We could have wound the right spring, but today in this city we did not have the right. Um, we didn't have the right spring stock. We needed a three-foot-long piece of 039 wire, and no one stocks that in Charleston. So we're going to have to actually order it.
For you electronics guys, if you like trying to find a 47 microfarad capacitor on a Friday, good luck. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. All right, that's there. Almost, almost, almost. Yes, I could mic it, but I'm gonna tell you that the mics lie. The mics lie, because we're dealing with a, we're dealing with a spring that can compress and expand, and it will lie to you. Because I've got news to you. This gun's been lying to me for a full three days now. There we go. That's on the money. That doesn't override that. You can hang on to that, please, sir. Um, we'll get the heck of a saw. When we'll peel this off, right? Then we'll take the drill bit out of the tailstock. Right? We'll stuff the drill bit through this thing so that the when a saw breaks through, this piece doesn't take off across the room. careful and kiss in on this. It's not just a straightforward. If it was just straightforward, I would have just cut it off, but here we go. I just didn't want it to wind up underneath the lathe. All right, I'll take this out. piece of stock we cut it out of and we're only allowed to be 300 long which right there we're at 300 yeah we're on the money so the next thing we're gonna do stick this drill bit through this we're gonna grab it by the skirt tuck that drill bit up in there we're grabbing it by the skirts doing or the drill bit's keeping me from collapsing the skirt. And yet I can get enough torque on this thing to be able to, uh, to uh, face it off. Because i got to face off down to that line right there. sure that I haven't gone under my minimum but I think I'm pretty damn close now we wanted that to be three zero we wanted that to be 50 thousandths of an inch 45 50 we wanted that to be 50 damn it that's going to be small We'll show you during the engineering treatise on this thing just how small of amount of uh, just how small of amount of steel we had to work with. This gun is a blivet. A blivet is nine pounds of shit in a two-pound box, and this thing is definitely a blivet. All right, we're there. So let's go ahead and. 
bring that out. And then we'll go ahead and we'll kiss the... Kiss that shoulder off, make that look pretty. Throw that under there. Okay. And then we'll gauge this for size. Oh, a little fat still. And then this is uh, OAL is 300. Okay, still a little bit fat. We've got to come down just a tad bit more. Um, when we did our measurements on the gun, very, very specific about how many thousandths of an inch we're supposed to be here, there, or everywhere. Very, very specific. That's got to come down another two, maybe, maybe three thousandths. That's going to be us right there. All right, that's going to be me right there. All right. All right. Check that. And yep. All right. Almost got that. Remember that part of what we're doing out there today, we're also working up ammo for this. So we're trying to work on a Ford... Uh, a four variable problem at one time here. We're working on different, uh, not only charges, but we're also working on powder speed because at the end of the day, this thing's a pistol caliber carbine. So there's that to play with. And the trick is to have this thing operate and not beat itself to death. Draw, push in, verify that we're forward to the corner. Do you want me to double are. check that? Hold on, let's look at it. Uh, actually, in my experience, you might not have a full chamber. So you're going to have to pop mag before you do anything. Okay, pop mag. I'll hold it for you. Oh. Yeah, you don't have a full chamber. So that's just a mag feed problem. You're going to have to come all the way to the rear, all the all way. I right, got it, got it, got a hold of it. You do? Okay, good. Got it. Okay. Yeah, you have to withdraw that thing way further than a Re normal. Reinsert, push forward, got. Okay. Yep. Now it's just a matter of... Shoot what? paper. Somewhere right? Else. Uh, three, two, one. Do we get full ejection? Uh, I didn't see it around. All right, check your port. Pipe. Yep. Holding. All right, cool. Out. Partial feet. Feet. Both on the ground. Got them both. Yeah. Throw them over there. Here's your mag. Sorry, Mark. I'm helping in filming. I bet you that didn't sink. Didn't. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay, brass came out it's right here. Yep. Now just gently pull that back and see that you have it by the extractor. I do. So let's just show. Yep. Okay, good. Okay. You can just run her forward because she has a very forgiving out of battery. Okay. That. Now that was a that didn't sound good, but there's another one in there. What didn't sound good about it? I just didn't. It didn't feel the same, but okay. So now you it's, got the right number of rounds? One, two, yeah. three, yeah. Okay. We're back into the gun now. Let's tear this thing down and see whether or not we damaged anything or not. Pull the barrel part off. Of course, this thing is a sticky, oily, nasty mess because we we used an enormous amount of oil. Oh, man. I'm going to tell you what, Bruce. We're there, buddy. We're there. There's no damage on the ring. Nothing touched down. Nothing battered. No damage on the collar. No damage up front. Brother, we're there. Outstanding. Holy crap, did I get a hole punched in my man card. Yowza. Well, that's what happens when you let train grass get going and, you know, that kind of thing works. <laughs>